All right, we're going to walk through a little budget constraint practice problem here for intro microeconomics. And on an exam, you might see something like this, where we're given a budget in this case of $20 per week used to consume only two goods, right? That's one of our assumptions with the budget constraint. We only have an X and a Y good, in this case, pizza and burgers. And you'll be given the price of each good as well. Uh, in this case, each slice of pizza has a price of $4, each burger a price of five. Okay, so that's the uh, initial information. And then you'll be asked to construct the equation, sketch the graph, and interpret what that model is telling us. Right? So in this case, say part A of the example question is gonna ask you to write the equation representing this consumer's budget constraint. And again, we're even two goods and it doesn't really matter which you choose to be the, the Y versus the X good. It'll change the way we write the equation and sketch out the graph, but the underlying relationships will be the same. In this case, to make it simple, so we're all doing the same thing, it's specified that pizza will be the quote unquote Y variable. And that means we're gonna solve the equation for the quantity of pizza as a function of quantity of the X good, in this case, burgers, right? And we'll start with the generic budget constraint equation where quantity of Y equals the budget divided by the price of Y. So that's the maximum number of units we could consume if we consume zero X. And then that ratio of the prices, PX over PY, is the rate of trade-off between the two goods, right? The opportunity cost of, of consuming each unit of X, how much Y are we gonna have to decrease from that maximum level? So all we gotta do is change the notation, right? Y will be pizzas, X will be burgers, B will be 20, that's that budget. And the price of X, the price of the burger is five, price of Y is the price of pizza, which was given as four. So we're basically just plugging in the values that were given. So our budget 20 divided by the price of our Y good pizza four, that gives us the intercept, the Y intercept of five, and then the ratio of prices PX over PY, or the price of burgers over the price of pizza, five over four, which gives us a slope of negative 1.25. Again, so we have quantity of pizza, equals five minus 1.25 times the quantity of burgers. So now we can plug in the number of burgers that you consume and we'll be able to calculate the maximum number of pizzas that you consume with the remaining budget. But that's all that question is asking for. Just translate the generic equation into the values and the, uh, the units of measurement, the goods that are being consumed in this example. And then inevitably, you'll be asked to sketch out a budget constraint. And the key, of course, is right, indicating the correct X and Y intercept values. So we know it's going to be that downward sloping relationship showing the trade-off. We just want to indicate the correct values there. So starting again with our equation, we've already got half the battle won here. The Y intercept is going to be five. So when quantity of burgers, our X good is zero. Quantity of pizza will be five. So that's our Y intercept, budget over the price. The X intercept, right, it's going to be the budget over the price of burgers. So if pizza was zero, we used all $20 to consume burgers. How many units could we buy? Well, 20 over five or four. So we just plug in the values the y-intercept of five, the x-intercept of four, connect the dots, and there is your sketch of the budget constraint. And when you're asked for the slope, right, that's going to be the value here that we've already calculated, the rate of trade-off between the two goods, the negative 1.25 in this case. Moving on. And again, we've, we've pretty much already answered this one. Question C, what is the consumer's opportunity cost of each burger consumed? So just remember that the opportunity cost of the good on the X axis of the, the sketch of the diagram 
is the, the slope of the budget constraint line. So the opportunity cost of X is the slope of the line. So that's that 1.25. And whenever you get confused, you can just calculate it with the ratio of prices, right? So if we consume one more burger, we're spending $5. We could have used that $5 to buy pizza, which only cost $4 per unit. So we could have bought 1.25 units or five over four units. The opportunity cost of the good on the y-axis, in this case, pizza, right? It's just going to be the reciprocal. We just have to flip that around. So it's one over the slope, in this case, four over five. And again, just do the same little mental exercise. If we buy one more pizza, it costs us $4. We could have spent that $4 on burgers, which cost $5 per unit. So we couldn't quite buy a whole burger. Don't try this at McDonald's. You can't ask for 80% of a burger, but that would be the per unit trade-off, right? 0.84 over five. And then again, we already did this as well, but be able to put it into words, right? Explain the meaning of those intercepts that we solved for. An intercept always gives us the maximum level of consumption in each good if the entire budget was spent on that good. Zero X, how much Y could we buy? Zero Y, how many X could we buy? Those are gonna be the intercepts. So maximum consumption. And moving on down the line here, question F, if this consumer purchases one burger per week, how many pizzas can she afford? Show your work, indicate the point on the diagram, on the budget constraint that we sketched out. So essentially all we're doing here is plugging in a value for of one into our budget constraint equation. There. Right. So our equation, we can solve for the quantity of pizza that we can afford for any given value of burgers. Right. And we can plug in that value of one here and we get five minus 1.25 times one, which gives us a value of 3.75. So that's gonna be the height of the budget constraint line when X is equal to one. So it's go straight up and we get that 3.75. The other way to get there would be to say, if we started at this point, purchasing zero burgers and spending all of our money on pizza, and we moved one to the right, we consume one extra unit, one burger, how far down are we gonna have to go? it'll be that opportunity cost, that 1.25 units, which would land us right where we knew we were gonna end up at 3.75. All right, question G, now things start to change, right? So kind of use the budget constraint to show the dynamics uh, of consumer behavior, right? Show the impact of an increase in the price of burgers from $5 to $10 per unit on the diagram. And again, you can do this with the equation or with the diagram, starting with the equation. We're just leaving the budget the same, leaving the price of our Y good the same, but the price of X has doubled, right? So it's still 20 over four. So the Y intercept is still the same. That's gonna be here. But the rate of trade-off has essentially doubled. That numerator term has gone from five up to 10. So if we plot that out, we now have five minus 2.5 times the quantity of burgers. So when we think about that slope, doubling, right? It's twice as steep as it used to be. It's going to look like that. And where is it going to hit our maximum consumption level now if we spend all $20 on burgers and they cost $10 each would be two, right? So our new X intercept, the budget stays the same, but the price went up. So we're PB prime, if you will is gonna be that 20 over 10 or two. So we could just start with that 
and connect up those two points, the y-intercept and the new x-intercept, and that'll be our new constraint, but we should also be able to show it with the equation as well. All right, we almost got it now. Last question, relate what we just saw, that pivot effect in the budget constraint uh, to the quote unquote income effect of a price change and the law of demand. Right? So remember the law of demand tells us simply when the price of a product goes up, we expect consumers to purchase less, quantity demanded will fall. The income effect is one reason why we would reasonably expect that to happen. And it's essentially what we just saw on that diagram, that the price of X went up and this pivot to our new budget constraint means that all of the combinations of X and Y, pizza and burgers, in this squiggly region between the two budget lines are now unattainable. So when the price of burgers goes up, even if we still wanted to buy Right, whatever it was we were purchasing before, we can't afford it. Right? We have to move in. The real value of our budget, of our income, has decreased. So when the price goes up, consumption goes down simply because right, we can't afford the old combination. So a price increase acts the same as effectively a decrease in your budget. So just be able to put that into words and kind of locate what's happening there on the diagram. So that pivot inward due to a price increase results in that area representing consumption bundles that are now unattainable, that area between the old and the new budget lines. And that forces the consumer to reduce consumption of the good who has experienced the increase in price. Perhaps the other good as well, right? But the law of demand is the own price effect. Price of burgers goes up, we consume fewer burgers, and we can see exactly why, at least part of the, the reason why we expect to see that here. All right, so hopefully that was helpful and we'll see you guys next.